Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jordan Badu. I work with Professor Anthony Gerbic at the University of Michigan in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. I'm here today to present to you our work on a reflective metasurface for perfect cylindrical to planar wavefront transformation. We began by defining perfectly reflecting metasurfaces. Shown in the figure is a single layer pattern metallic cladding over a grounded dielectric substrate fed by an infinite line source. The metasurface in this case is two dimensional and hence the geometry is invariant in the direction in and out of the page. The infinite line source radiates a perfect cylindrical wave which impinges upon the metasurface. The incident cylindrical wave is perfectly transformed into a reflected plane wave by the metasurface. This transformation requires rigorous mutual coupling modeling between the elements on the finite width substrate. We will model the mutual coupling through the use of integral equations. Here we briefly describe the metasurface concept. The fine features of the subwavelength reflectory elements are homogenized when the probing wavelength becomes long and the medium properties become averaged. The metasurface will exhibit the same scattering parameters as its homogenized sheet model as shown in the upper right of the slide. Rather than modeling the currents on the pattern geometry, we model the currents on the homogenized equivalent. Since the elements are sub-wavelength, the currents are nearly constant and thus only require a single pulse basis to model. A simple boundary condition relates the total electric field on the homogenized elements to the surface currents and sheet impedances. The metasurface design boundary condition is negative n hat cross n hat cross e total equal to eta sheet times the surface current density j. We use the metasurface design boundary condition to design the sheet impedances of the stacked metasurface. There are four simple steps to follow. One, we determine the desired total electric field on the metasurface. Two, we express the scattered field in terms of the surface currents. Three, we solve for the currents using the method of moments. Four, we determine the required sheet impedance from the metasurface boundary condition. We will outline these four solution steps in the following slides. In step one, we determine the desired total field. The total field can be written as the summation of the incident field and the scattered field. The incident field is known from the specification of the feed, in this case, the field radiated by an infinite line source. The scattered field phase is stipulated, only the amplitude remains to be determined. Since we desire a lossless and passive metasurface, all the power entering the closed volume surrounding the metasurface should leave the, leave the volume. Thus, we may initially find the scattered field amplitude by matching locally the power density at each point on the metasurface. Locally setting the incident power density equal to the negative of the scattered field power density leads to an expression for the scattered field amplitude similar to that of a plane wave. From this amplitude specification, the total field is specified. In step two, we formulate the integral equation. The geometry is invariant in the z direction and hence the problem is two dimensional. From the impedance boundary condition, an integral equation for each layer can be formulated. The first integral equation with observations made on the metasurface relates the incident field to the total field minus the scattered field from the currents on the metasurface minus the scattered field from the currents on the ground plane. The scatter fields are found from convolving the current density with the two-dimensional Green's function for free space. Similarly for the ground plane, an additional second integral equation is formulated. There are two EFIEs and two unknowns in each, the induced current density on the metasurface and that on the ground plane. The two EFIEs will be solved simultaneously using the method of moments. The integral equations are discretized and cast in a matrix form using the method of moments formulations with pulse basis functions and point matching. A block matrix equation is formed with the total field appearing on the left-hand side as the matrix W. The matrix W is formed from point matching samples of the desired total field formulated in step one. This matrix equation can now be solved for both the unknown current densities. In step four, we solve the matrix equations to obtain the induced current densities. Returning to the discretized version of the impedance boundary condition, we can obtain the metasurface impedances by direct division of the desired total field from step one and the induced current density on the metasurface layer. The impedances are plotted in the figure shown. The impedances are complex with both real and imaginary parts. The real parts contain both positive and negative resistances, indicating the need for both lossy and active elements. We use the design procedure to design a 20 lambda reflector a placed lambda by 10 over a ground plane. The metasurface is fed by a line source 10 lambda above the metasurface. The impedance profile is shown in the figure at the lower left of the slide. Comsol simulations of the sheet impedance over the ground plane produce the near field phase plot shown on the right of the slide. The incident field phase shows a perfect cylindrical wave incident onto the metasurface. The scattered field phase shows a perfect reflected plane wave. This perfect transformation required complex sheet impedances. Generally, the complex sheet impedances should be avoided and a purely reactive sheet impedance is desired. In the next slide, we will investigate the origin of the real part of the sheet impedances. 
Returning to step one in the design cycle where we determined the desired total field, we found the scatter field amplitude by matching locally the incident field power density to the negative of the scatter field power density. Since both the incident field and the scatter field exist simultaneously on the metasurface plane, the expansion of the normal component of power density leads to three distinct terms. The first is the incident field power density. The second is the scatter field power density. The third arises due to the interference between the incident field and scattered field. This observation was first made by groups listed in the references at the bottom of the slide. These three terms are plotted in the figure to the right. The blue curve shows the incident field power density. The red curve shows the scattered field power density, which we have made equal to the negative of the incident field power density locally. And the final green curve is the power density associated with the interference between the incident field and the scattered field. Since this term integrates to a zero net value, setting the local scattered field power density equal to the negative of the local incident field power density leads to global power density conservation, but not local power conservation. Locally, there is both net positive and net negative power density at points along the metasurface. We will see in the next slide that these power densities lead to positive and negative resistances in the sheet impedances necessary to synthesize these positive and negative power densities present along the metasurface. Alternatively, one could shuttle power from locations of positive power to locations of negative power using surface waves. These designs are therefore called non-local power conservation designs. As alluded to before, the positive and negative power density of the interference term leads to positive and negative resistances in the sheet impedances. By zooming into the sheet impedance, the real part of the sheet impedance can be matched up to the power density associated with the interference terms. It is seen that a positive resistance is manifested by positive power density and a negative sheet resistance is manifested by negative power density. As it is generally desired to obtain purely reactive metasurfaces, we have developed an optimization strategy to obtain purely reactive metasurfaces which give the same performance as the perfectly reflecting complex sheet counterparts. Thus, we will throw out the real part of the sheet impedance and search for a completely reactive sheet which gives the same perfect transformation as the complex sheet. The optimization strategy is shown in the figure on the left. The kept reactances are arranged along orthogonal dimensions of an n-dimensional space, where n is the number of elements in the metasurface and are made to vary along their respective axes. A surface is constructed as a function of these reactances. This surface is the cost function and is constructed such that its minimum corresponds to the desired optimum performance, that of the complex sheet. The equation of the surface is the RMS difference between the scatter field amplitude and phase measured along a plane one lambda above the metasurface, resulting from that of the purely reactive sheet and that of the complex sheet. This observation plane of one lambda above the metasurface is chosen to allow surface waves to develop along the array and decay before being measured. The complex sheet solution does not admit surface waves. However, it is the hope that the purely reactive sheet will develop surface waves to shuttle power along the array. In that case, the field amplitude and phase along the metasurface will not be equal. However, the scatter field amplitude and phase along the one lambda plane will be, as the evanescent field content has decayed away by then. Gradient descent optimization will be obtained, will be used to obtain the minimum and optimum solution. Shown on the right of the screen is the periodic simulation of a single ideal sheet impedance illuminated by a normally incident plane wave. Since the incidence is TE polarized, the capacitive sheet supports a surface wave. This surface wave is difficult to resolve when modeling the current with pulse basis and integral equations, and thus we resorted to COMSOL to evaluate the cost function. COMSOL can evaluate the cost function much faster, and thus we interface COMSOL with our MATLAB optimization routine. The optimization results are shown on this slide. The near field amplitude and phase observed along the one lambda plane is shown on the right. The black curve is the scatter field amplitude and phase resulting from the complex sheet and thus represents the target perfectly reflecting solution. The red curve is the amplitude and phase of the scatter field observed along the one lambda plane when the real part of the complex sheet is thrown out and only the reactance is kept just prior to optimization. By removing the real part, the near fields get degraded and hence the far field side lobe envelope gets perturbed as seen in the plot on the lower left. The optimization leads to a purely reactive sheet which radiates the scattered near field amplitude and phase shown in the blue curve. As can be seen, the optimized reactive sheet gives the same near fields, both amplitude and phase, as the complex sheet without the need for the resistances. The far field side lobe envelope is restored. The optimized reactive sheet thus results from the optimization is shown in the upper left of the slide. The optimized reactive sheet shows no real part and has perturbations in the imaginary part. These perturbations will be shown to generate surface waves which shuttle power around and lead to our non-local power conserving design. The impedance profile is repeated on the upper right of the slide. In the figure on the left, we plot the total field amplitude spectrum observed just on the metasurface plane. The total field spectrum of the complex sheet is shown in the red curve, and that of the optimized reactive sheet is shown in the blue curve. 
As can be seen, the complex sheet has little to no evanescent spectrum, and the optimized reactive sheet shows significant evanescent spectrum. The evanescent spectrum is associated with surface waves which redistribute the power in order to obtain passivity. The spectra within the visible region of negative K0 to K0, shown boxed in black, are nearly identical, indicating that the two metasurfaces radiate the same fields. It is evident in this figure why the cost function for the optimization could not be formulated along the metasurface plane. These two spectra are not equal by necessity. The figure on the lower right shows the total field spectra for the same cases but observed along the one lambda plane. Here the spectra are equal, and thus the cost function could be built along this plane. Note also that the span on this figure is only K0 by 50, indicating that most of the energy is directed broadside to approximately Kx equal to zero, indicative of a perfect plane wave. The finiteness of the metasurface, of course, does not permit a delta function spectrum of an exact plane wave. We decided to pattern the optimized reactive sheet. This slide shows the library of printed geometries we use to, to pattern the metasurface cladding. The four elements are the IDC, the meandered line inductor, the gap capacitor, and the straight line inductor, and cover the full range of reactances needed to pattern the array. The full wave simulation results of the pattern metasurface is shown here. The pattern elements and ground plane were placed inside of a parallel plate waveguide in order to emulate infinite structures in the vertical direction. The array was fed by a line source. The resulting near field phase of the scattered field is shown in the upper right figure and the scattered far fields are shown in the upper left figure. The scattered far fields show good agreement with that of the method of moment solution of the ideal complex sheet design. In conclusion, the main takeaways of the presentation are listed here. Shaping the amplitude and phase in the near field with a single electric sheet is possible. The real part of the sheet impedance arises from not satisfying local power conservation along the metasurface. Optimization techniques can be constructed to obtain purely reactive sheets with the same perfect performance of the complex sheet. Pattern simulations validated the approach. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention and acknowledge our sponsors, the Office of Naval Research and the Army Research Office. Thank you for your attention.